For the light that you've given us, Father, we arise and shine. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. We take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And we fight every fight, thoughts that come against us. We fight it with the Word in our lips, Father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We give you the praise, Father. We give you the glory. Thank you for moving, Father, in this place. Your presence that is with us, Lord, that is already full, always full of joy, Lord. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And we declare, Father, that the Word of God is working health and healing into our physical body. It is giving us wisdom knowledge and understanding father to make right choices to make right decisions and we rise up and we take our place we will not sleep around being lazy but be diligent in our calling lord for we know when we stand before you lord that your word gives us instructions that we will stand before you and give an account of our life so god we will rise up and take our place and make the best use of our time with our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. We're going to sing this song. It's called Rise Up, You People of Power. This song is actually a declaration from these scriptures. Isaiah 60 verse 1, where the Lord says, Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It also tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14, wherefore he says, Awake you that sleep and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. Many times we see Jesus, he spoke to people, he said, rise up, arise and take your place. Because the enemy's strategy is for us to stay in one place and just go in the direction that you know, everybody else is going in. But the Lord is saying to us, rise up and take your place as a child of God. When the world is walking in darkness, you rise up with the light that is inside of you. When I read the New Testament, I see many times Jesus saying that to people, rise up and walk, rise up. And we see that when they rose up, they took their new place. And God is reminding you as a child of God to rise up. Don't sleep around in laziness and wishy-washy thinking of what could have happened or why did it happen. Decide and say, I'm not looking at the past. I'm not looking at that failure anymore. God says to awake from my sleep and I'm going to rise up. And if there are things the Lord is stirring up in your heart, He's going to give you that wisdom how to take that step. But we're not going to stay around sleeping and wish, live in that wishful thinking. Because the word of God tells you to rise up and take your place as a child of God. Amen. How many soldiers of God do we have here today? Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are in the army of the Lord. And the word, you know, in Ephesians 6, he gives us the blueprint like soldiers to take on our armor. 
to stand up against the enemy. So, you know, the enemy will want you to waste your years, waste your life. But don't waste it. Don't waste it on what the world is doing. Because we know where we are heading. We are going in the direction of life. And the world is, it's all death. It's all just brokenness. But we're not going to stay there. We're going to rise up with joy. We're going to rise up with peace and all the fruits of the Spirit as soldiers of Jesus. Let's rise up and take our place as we sing this song as a reminder, we are soldiers in Christ. And all of you online, we're so glad that you're here. Join us as we praise God. Wherever you are watching from, we welcome you. We know that the same power of God that is here will minister to you. We pray that you'll be strengthened and encouraged. God always has a word of encouragement, a word of knowledge to speak to us when we need to hear it. And we pray today that you will receive wisdom from above. Amen. Let's rise up and take our place. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory, Father. Your word is life to us. Your word is strength to us. We're not going to sleep around anymore in laziness, in what others are doing. But Lord, when you are stirring us up on the inside in our calling, we will rise up and take our place as children of God. Fight, fighting that fight of faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's praise him. Rise up, you people of power.
and say arise and shine arise hallelujah and shine. encourage each other to arise and shine amen we're going to shine and see the lord bring many souls into the kingdom because we see how the word of god tells us that the rewards that the lord has for us it is eternal rewards and the more we start rising up and taking our place we see how the blessings begin to follow us as the scripture says, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. But we're going to rise up and walk in the calling that the Lord has chosen and given to us. And the next song we're going to sing, the commandment that Jesus gave us, a new commandment he gave us. He said, a new kind of love, a new commandment I give unto you to love each other just as I've loved you. And when you read the book of 1 Corinthians 13, it tells us that without love, we are nothing. That love is the greatest thing of all. In fact, Jesus said this is the royal law. To love God, that's our number one priority. And then to love others with the love that he gives us. It's not a worldly kind of love where when you only feel like you do it, but it's a choice that you make daily to walk in love. When you are faced with hatred, you immediately Say, Lord, I'm going to love them with the love of the Lord. When you're faced with thoughts of being harsh, may you stop and you say, no, Jesus, I'm going to love them. I'm going to make my choice to love them with the love that you showed to me on the cross. That's the new kind of love he puts in you. Because the feeling kind of love just comes and goes. But when you start walking in the love of God, it's just going to overflow out of you. He's going to help you love each other. You don't have to be alone in this fight. The Lord will help you to fight those thoughts of hatred or harshness if they come against you. 
So let's sing about the love that he's given us, a new kind of love. patient, that is kind, does not envy, does not boast, not proud. Lord, we speak that is the love in our heart, Father. And we thank you for the love that you showed to us. We remind ourselves to look at you as our example, not to love only when we feel like it, but Lord, your love in us, it works all the time. 
Thank you, Lord. It's good to go to 1 Corinthians 13 and speak those over yourself. Speak it out and declare and say, Lord, your love in me is patient. When you read the word, personalize it to you. Say, Lord, your love that is in me is kind. Your love in me does not envy. It doesn't boast. Your love is not proud. Let's make those declarations and let's say it because we have opportunities in life to walk in hatred, to be harsh. And it's true, our flesh tries to rise up and say things. But we can train ourselves to walk in that love of God. So let's speak it out and let's make these declarations on the love that we were singing. Let's say, Lord, thank you for your love that is inside of me and working through me. Your love in me is patient. It is kind. Does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude or self-seeking. It only seeks what is good. Rejoices in the truth. Thank you for your love inside of me that is never going to fail. And I choose to walk in this new kind of love. Thank you for helping me, Lord. Giving me the strength giving me the strength to overcome, to overcome hatred, hatred harshness, harshness or, bitterness or bitterness with your love. With your love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing this next song. I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment of the day. Knowing about Jesus should just always thrill our hearts. Let's sing about it.
may be seated just take a few scriptures from the book concerning the covenant that we have with almighty god as why we partake why do we partake in this covenant meal let me take you to the book of john chapter 6 jesus made it very plain but the jews couldn't understand although they were in covenant with god through the blood of bulls and goats which were a type and shadow of the coming messiah but they didn't understand when jesus spoke on this now in john chapter 6 and verse number 50 jesus said this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die Jesus was comparing to his body the bread that comes from heaven a man shall eat and not die they were only talking about the bread that they had a few verses prior to this maybe from the from the very first verse we see the miracle of the feeding of the 5000 and they said forever lord feed us this meal and we would believe in you but he said i am the bread of life in verse 48 he says i am the bread of life i am the bread of life and then in verse 50 he said this is the bread which comes from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die verse 51 <clears throat> I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever he's talking about if any man believes in me he shall live forever and there is a covenant that comes along with it and the bread which I give you in is my flesh 
and the bread that i will give you is my flesh which i will give for the uh, for the life of the world he was talking about his bread his body that was going to be broken for the life of the world and if you really understand this our or our sin put him on the cross it was we who put him on the cross although we were not living it was our sin all put together we offered him up on the cross on the altar and god accepted that offering god accepted that offering and that's the reason he can forgive us and give us eternal life and that's what we believe in that's what we believe in and the jews they couldn't fathom this is cannibalism they said the jews they are of strove among themselves saying how can this man is talking about jesus give us his flesh to eat now jesus of jesus not talking about cannibalism he's not talking about his pieces of his body but he was talking about his life that was going to be offered for the wholeness of man verse 53 jesus said unto them verily verily or truly truly or assuredly i say unto you except you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink of his blood you have no life in you life is because of the body that was sacrificed on the cross the altar of the cross that we have life today and we just don't have this breathing part of it part of life only we have eternal life life after death life that is qualitatively and quantitatively the same forever qualitatively and quantitatively the life that he gives us is is quality life and also the quantity which is forever and forever so verse 54 he says whosoever 54 whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life when you receive jesus lord of your life you come into a covenant relationship with god and that's what we remember week after week some churches month after month some believers they do it every day in their homes when they wake up in the morning it's perfectly all right to remember what he has done for us and who so eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day at the or the last breath that you breathe in this world and thereafter you say it's death but he's going to raise you up he's going to raise you up verse 55 my flesh is meat indeed and my body my 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 blood is a uh, drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth dwelleth in me and i dwell in him this was the covenant that jesus was coming to give to the jews first and then when the jew rejected we gentiles were privileged to have it because we believe in jesus christ this is the life that came from heaven there was no sacrifice that was perfect enough for god to accept to give us eternal life so god himself provided for us a lamb for the whole the sins of the whole world that's in john 1 and verse 27 or 29 john 1 and verse number 29 and the next day john see a jesus coming and said behold look the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world that's the lamb of god john was the cousin of jesus he said that's the lamb of by revelation he spoke 
He didn't see him walking as a lamb, but he said, this is the lamb that was provided. God himself provided for himself a lamb. Where we offered on the altar of the cross and he in return gave us life. God, when he was pleased with the sacrifice of Jesus, he was able to redeem mankind altogether. And finally we'll read 1 Corinthians and chapter 10 and verse 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16 the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion is it not the communion of the blood of Christ the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ and thereafter, in the book of the, the next chapter, chapter 11, Jesus said it like this in verse 26. For as often, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. You're, you're, you're declaring, you're showing forth the Lord's death till he comes. Your life for his life. You're showing forth to the people of the world what Christ has done for me. What his sacrifice has made me to be. You're showing forth. You're showing forth. You show forth the Lord's death till he comes. It's no point talking about what he went through, but your life will show forth. The eternal life that you have received. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I've been set free from addictions. I've been freed today. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Christ made me free. Christ, I'm showing forth to the world. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show. You, you do show forth. You announce. That's another, another meaning there. You show forth, you announce to the world, look what the Lord has done for me in exchange for what he went through on the cross. Okay, we, sometimes we feel so sorry for what he has went through and we, God says it's, it's, it's not that we need to feel sorry, but we need to show forth what his death has given me. I thank God for the death. I believe the man who was hanging on the cross, the man who was next to him, he really felt it. And even the person who was supposed to be the third person in, instead of Christ, he was Barabbas. He was supposed, he's a murderer. He was supposed to be on the cross. But we, knew, we, we, we see how Jesus took his place and he was set free. It would have been a surprise to him. How come I'm supposed to be on the cross? Somebody has died for me. Jesus died for him. Barabbas would have been the first to experience what we experience today. The life of Jesus. Thank God. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily, shall be guilty of the body of the Lord, guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus. Don't do it irreverently. It is, it is not, it's to be done with all reverence for all what Christ has done for us. So, as we partake in the body, and verse 28 talks about, when you examine yourself, verse 28 talks about examine yourself, examine let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. When you examine yourself, what do you see? Do you see Christ in you? Do you see that you're holy? That you, do you see when you examine yourself? You need to examine yourself once in a while and see. See, when you examine yourself, you don't see that you're a sinner you see that you are the righteousness of God. 
When you examine yourself, you don't condemn yourself. You say, thank God, Jesus lives inside of me. I don't condemn myself. Examine yourself. I know there are many churches who think it differently. When we examine ourselves, we've got to think of all the sins that we have committed the whole week. Think of all the sins. And people even go beyond that and say, oh my God, I'm, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You don't partake that way. You thank God for what he has done for you. Some say, well, you take advantage. The grace, message of grace is taking advantage <clears throat> and live your own lifestyle. No, you wouldn't. You'll begin to love more. You'll begin to love Jesus more and more. And you say, God, you have not judged me according to my works, but you have judged me according to the work of Jesus Christ. I thank God that I'm not judged by my works. But Lord, I thank you that you judge me through the perfect work that Christ offered on the cross. So when you see me, you see me through the blood. You see me through the body of Jesus. That makes me love him more. Instead of trying to do something, instead of trying to be, understanding you are, I'm trying to be good. No, you are the righteousness of God. When you know your standing position, you live different, you talk different, you act different. You're conscious of the very life of Jesus Christ, which is his body and his blood that was shed for you and for me. So when you examine yourself, see Christ in you. I'm in Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. See, when you examine your life, you don't see all that muck that you have had in the past. Oh, what a dirty person I am. You see Christ Jesus in me. I thank God I can live. So let's partake in the covenant meal as we worship the Lord. Thank 
you, Lord Jesus. You were the perfect lamb that we offered on the altar of the cross for the redemption of mankind. It was we, it's not the Jews, it's we, our sin, that offered you up on the cross. All throughout history, we have been blaming the Jews. We've been blaming the Roman Empire. But Lord, all collectively, all generations put together, we offered you on the cross to redeem us, to redeem our children, to redeem our children's children, and to redeem every generation and bring them into the saving knowledge and have eternal life through your blood and your body. Lord, we are so thankful to you, Lord, for all what you've done for us through which all what you went through so that we can show forth, we can announce, proclaim the good news of what Jesus has done for me. And if he did for me, he can do it for somebody else. Thank you for your love and your favor and your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. We put aside all hatred, but we invite love instead of hatred. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's part it together. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you, Lord, for all the good that you have provided for us. We are thankful to you, Lord. If nothing else we could say, but be thankful to you for what you did for us on the cross. And when you were hanging on the cross, you said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. But now we know it is we who put you up on the cross for our sins, for our redemption. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us, for healing us. Thank you, Lord. Just be healed right now of that back pain. The Lord is healing you. And just put your hands behind you and just say, I am loosed from this back Thank pain you, in the name of Jesus. I am loosed from it right now. Just lay your hands over there and just say, I'm loosed from this pain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed from that back pain right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody who is here, somebody who is watching, or somebody who will even watch later. Just receive your healing. If Jesus heals one, he heals all. If he heals one backache, he can heal all those who are going through backaches, headaches, chest pains, eye infections, brain tumors. Any kind, any kind, any terminal illness, it's no big thing. If he can heal a headache, it is the same thing, it's the same power that heals even a terminal illness. So just receive your healing in this covenant meal. Receive your healing and say, I'm healed by what Jesus went through. And further we understand that he bore stripes upon his body through which we are healed. The crown of thorns that, he put, that was put upon him is to heal us of all brain injury, mental torment, fear of the future, 
fear of what people would do to you or what the situation will turn around in your life. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance. It's healing for you. It's time to rejoice and receive your healing and deliverance. Thank God. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. And the curse of the law is sin, sickness, disease, poverty. Sin, sickness, disease, poverty, even eternal death. You're redeemed from the curse. Live a fearless person from this day forth. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise and honor him and bring our tithes before him. I'd like to read this scripture also from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 10. The book before Judges. And now, okay, we read from verse number 8 onwards. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 26 and verse number 8. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with, gr with great terribleness and with signs and wonders because Egypt was not releasing the people of God. Egypt is a type and shadow of the world and the devil for us. And we were slaves in the world to the devil. But God with a mighty hand outstretched arm with great terribleness. He pulled us out of the world and out of the devil's kingdom and brought us into his land. Verse 9 says, and he has brought us into this place that we are in right now and had given us this land, even the land that floweth with milk and honey. Jesus has made you free and he has brought you out of scarceness into the land of abundance. Land that floweth with milk and honey. I could release that blessing and believe into my body and say, Lord, I thank you for the milk of healing and for the honey of prosperity that you have given me. You have brought me out. You have brought me out and brought me into the place of health and to the place of prosperity. And the next verse says, And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land. You blessed me, Lord, and I am bringing forth my first, which thou, O Lord, has given me. You have given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship him. Worship before the Lord. As you bring your tithes and your offerings, you worship Him. Thank Him. Honor Him and say, Lord, you are so good to me. You brought me out from the world, from the hand of the devil, into the promised land, floweth with milk and honey, which is a land that flows with health and the peace and prosperity of God. And now behold, I bring my, my, my tithes and my offerings unto you and worshipping. And then verse 15 says, Now look down from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people, Israel. And you are the spiritual Israel. And the land which you have given us as thou swearest unto our fathers, the land that flows with milk and honey. You're in the land of milk and honey. So honor him and say, Lord, what you have blessed me with, I'm going to give you. And I honor you. And as you bring your tithes and your offerings, worship him. Thank you, Lord. Oh
full of power.